In the age of motion controls, before there was Mario Kart Wii, we had a game called Hot Wheels Beat That. A neat little arcade racing game where you race 1 64th scale toy Hot Wheels cars on orange plastic tracks. I always loved the theme of being a tiny little car racing around a large environment. These incredibly creative tracks have really stuck with me. This game is so cool, so legendary, that almost nobody ever played it and it was completely lost and forgotten. But today I'm gonna dredge this game up from the murky waters of irrelevancy. I wanna know, was my childhood wasted on this game or is it actually somehow as good as I remember? There are a few different versions of this game, but I'm gonna focus on the Wii one, since the other ones don't seem to have motion controls, so they aren't real racing games. The differences between versions is mostly negligible, stuff like graphics and the placement of level music. Well, the game starts off very promising, with a thousand little logo movies. Apparently this game was developed by a company called Eutechnics, who have made dozens of racing games, so they should know what they're doing. And then that Activision logo comes in and slices my expectations in half. After that, we get this cinematic masterpiece of an intro. This car's flying around and blowing up in a big bedroom and they've got like Slipknot in the background. We'll get more into the soundtrack later. For now, let's take a peek at these menus. This main menu screen looked great when I was a kid. I thought it was like full 3D. As we move through to create a user profile, we start to get some of the announcer guy. This guy permeates every moment of this game, so you better get used to him. Once you select the race, you get to pick the little Hot Wheels car you want to drive around. They each have different stats and can benefit certain playstyles, but I don't have time to look around at all these bars, so I'm just gonna pick the one with the fire and a skeleton on it. When the race starts, you have to time this little meter to touch the green to get a speed boost, which is super easy to do. And once the race starts, you realize two things. The first being that this track is insanely cool. Being a tiny car racing through an ordinary environment is so much fun, and they do a great job playing into that. The little plastic sounds that your car makes when it hits things, the random objects covering the floor, they really make you feel your scale. The second thing that you notice is that you have no control of what is happening to your vehicle. It's like driving a bar of soap. You have no traction whatsoever, so you're constantly slamming into walls of the track. And then you hit a speed boost and get thrown out into this open area where you fly all the way into this far wall because the boost gave you way too much speed. And so you're left questioning yourself. Was I supposed to avoid the boost? Was it a trap? Was I supposed to slam into that wall and then just recover? Is that the Carl's Jr. logo? But if you can master these controls, you just might be able to make it to the finish line. You need intimate track knowledge just to play this game, like to survive. And honestly, I love it. The struggle just to stay on the track really made me appreciate when I got good enough to land in first place. And then after the controls started making a little bit of sense, I learned that there was drifting, and now I need to figure that out. There's a real sense of skill progression that I just don't feel as much in Mario Kart. It's almost like learning to ride a bike and then seeing someone do a wheelie, and it just gets you excited to be good enough to do stuff like that. Uh, don't get me wrong, this game held up like the London Bridge, but I actually enjoyed playing it, nostalgia aside. The core gameplay is standard stuff as far as arcade racing games go. You've got to complete three laps and aim for first place to get the most flames. They can't just be points, that's boring. They have to be made out of fire. As you work your way through these races, you get weapons by going through rings. You'll never guess what the rings are made out of. The weapons are pretty basic. Most of them are functionally the same as Mario Kart items. But of course, this is Hot Wheels, and Hot Wheels don't mess around. So instead of green shells, it's missiles. And instead of a banana peel, it's a landmine. Racing just isn't the same without explosive ordnance. These abilities are far less involved than they are in a game like Mario Kart. Their effects are mostly very minor, like flipping over their car and stealing some of their supercharge, which you use to buff an ability. But then there are abilities like the Tesla Shock, which stuns the car closest to you and makes them incapable of turning for several seconds. This sucks to get hit by, but honestly, you don't really need to worry about getting hit by any of these, at least not on the first difficulty. Because you're either miles ahead sitting in first place or somewhere in the traffic jam that this game calls a race. The balancing is trash, no gameplay, all flash. Deciphering the controls is like a plastic road rash. I swear this game is good. One of the highlights of Hot Wheels Beat That is the incredibly creative tracks that you don't even get to play until you complete a bunch of bonus objectives on tracks you've already played to death, but after that you get access to some sick tracks like Bathroom Break. I swear this game is good. And dang does this soundtrack go hard. That is one heck of a bathroom break. The music and sound design were done by Peter Connolly, who went on to fill a similar role for the crew in Watch Dogs. This soundtrack is way too mean for a game about racing toy cars. While the music was produced by Peter Connolly, it was performed by Edzel Dope, whose band Dope has some pretty interesting songs, one of which was allegedly used in military training and interrogations. The perfect guy to do the Hot Wheels soundtrack. 
but it gives what would otherwise be a lame experience quite a bit of energy. But guess what? There's more than just bathroom break. There are a total of four courses that take place in the bedroom zone. These have you driving over keyboards and knocking over dominoes and all kinds of iconic bedroom stuff. But after you have enough flames here, you unlock the mini golf zone, which is my personal favorite. Each mini golf track takes place on a differently themed mini golf course, ranging from dinosaurs to spooky stuff. There's just something so cool about these tracks that I can't explain. Oh, nostalgia. I will say, the mini golf tracks could do a better job at making you feel tiny. It's only these clipboards and golf balls that remind you that this is a golf course and not just some crazy racetrack. But that tiny gripe aside, there are a few songs in this zone, and they all sound great for 2007 Hot Wheels Wii game standards. Each zone usually reuses a couple of songs, which is a bit of a disappointment. But none of them get reused so often that you need to call Peter and tell him how awful Floorboard Frenzy sounds. As you earn flames, you unlock a couple new game modes for each track. The default game mode is called Quick Race, which is like a race, except yeah, it's just a race. Then you can play the same track on Eliminator mode, which is where the racer in last place explodes every 30 seconds. That's some participation award. So you need to stay out of last place until everybody else explodes. Then there's Rampage, where you need to blow up a certain amount of cars before the timer runs out. After you complete all of the races in a given zone, you unlock Tournament mode. This is just like Grand Prix from Mario Kart. You race a few tracks back to back and rack up points. And this is a nice incentive to participate in these tournaments. If you get first place, you earn a new car, which usually has crazy high stats. Aside from Rampage, most of the game modes are very similar. All you need to do is stay in first place, which is not a challenge on its own. But where things get tricky is the bonus goals. Every race has two goals that you can complete to gain extra flames. And if you want to unlock new tracks, you need to get these extra flames. The goals are very poorly balanced. One mission they're super easy, and the next they're just on the verge of possibility, and then they go right back to being super easy. A very common goal is to achieve a certain amount of Hot Wheels points, which you get from doing tricks and stuff. But drifting and jumping hardly reward you at all, so the only way to reach these goals is to utilize something called drafting. Drafting is where you follow another car and get free points. So you have to sit there behind some infuriatingly slow ice cream truck and feather the gas so you don't crash into him. And then once it tells you the goal is complete, you have to get back to first place before the race ends. Well, these goals are far from perfect, heck, they're far from balanced, they do a really good job breaking up the monotony of sitting in first place the whole time. Without the goals, this game would be extremely boring. After completing the mini golf zone, you head to the attic. The attic is like the bedroom on steroids. It's a good bit more difficult, and introduces some new track themes. Which sadly means no bathroom break. But it does have a pinball table, and a pool table, and even a regular table. The attic music is a little more electronic, but it still sounds like the audio manifestation of a black lunchbox with flames on it. All of the attic tracks have a more unified theme like the bedroom did. It's pretty cool to drive through a miniature train set one race, and then drive through a different part of it the next race. And if you ever get bored, there is some multiplayer fun to be had as well. You can play any race you've already unlocked in two-player mode, but sadly you can't unlock races in two-player mode. So if you're wanting to do a full playthrough with somebody else, you're gonna want to beat the game solo first. Otherwise, your friend is just gonna have to sit there while you farm goals to unlock new tracks. But if you just want to blow each other up, you can play the arena mode. This is an open battle mode, a lot like Balloon Battle from Mario Kart. Drive around, get weapons, try to hit each other. But my favorite thing to do in this mode has always been exploring the level. I remember me and my brother trying so hard to get out of this window and drive around the neighborhood, which of course we were never able to pull off. I was devastated. I also remember finding some glitch to fall through the floor, but I'm not sure where that was. Once you get back to the attic and finish it up, you'll unlock a new area, the bowling alley. Obviously. These tracks have a really cool aesthetic, but I can't help but feel a little disappointed by them. There are long stretches that sort of lose that tiny toy car feeling, and it just seems like a normal racetrack. But when it does feel like a bowling alley, it's pretty awesome. You get to drive up through that thing that the bowling ball comes out of, you know, the thing that tells you not to stick your hand in it or it'll get disintegrated. When it works, it's really cool. The music is a little weak in my opinion, but there are a few good songs. One in particular sounds illegally close to the song Can't Stop by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This soundtrack is full of heavy inspiration, bordering on straight theft. Well, that's every zone in Hot Wheels Beat That, and pretty much every mechanic. I think my favorite area is the mini golf zone, because it has the most unique tracks. Sure, driving through the same area in a different way can be cool, but you have to love the fact that each track in the mini golf zone is entirely new. And come on, there's a giant mansion and an octopus, this zone is so much fun. In some ways, I actually prefer this game to Mario Kart. It's more fair, it's got a more thorough progression system, and it has announcer guy. 
Hot Wheels Beat That is incredibly far from perfect. Mario Kart Wii will always be a more stable experience. But being stable gets boring. Sometimes you need to strap missiles to a bar of soap and send it flying down a plastic track. These tracks are incredibly unclear. They're full of questionable design choices. Where Mario Kart makes you lose to a random item flying out of nowhere, this game will have you lose to a strange quirk in the track's layout. But at least here, you can learn that quirk and avoid losing to it in the future, making the unfair difficulty more conquerable. So is this game better than Mario Kart Wii? Not at all, but it can very well be more fun, and that's what matters. Well anyways, I hope I filled you in on this little racing game well enough to know if it's something you might want to pick up. Or if you've played it before, maybe this brought back some memories. Either way, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.